Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, a major return is set for this week's SmackDown. I'm going to tell you the real reason MJF has been missing from AEW programming recently. I'm going to give you the weird reason why you should expect some craziness at Survivor Series. And a major update on our truths injury. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. The, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is the news, and this is a story from it. Uh, <laughs> who's returning on SmackDown this week? Well, I've read this story, so I can't yeah. guess. Yeah, you know who it is. Seamus, isn't it? Uh, Yay! Congratulations <laughs> so, on getting married, by the yeah, way. Yeah, congratulations. He's been gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, the real reason behind that is, yes, he was getting married in New York City. Uh, great stuff. You've all seen the photos. You've seen them all, like, comparing legs and stuff. You've Poor seen bastard Miro. and his groomsmen. Oh. Yeah, Miro getting his thighs out oh, and stuff. Oh it's good, good stuff across the board. Drew was there as well. Claudio Castagnoli. Yeah, you know the drill. Um, WWE wrote him off television. Uh, on the 21st of October with a beatdown by the bloodline. They destroyed his arm. They put it in a chair and then against the, the steps and stuff and all yeah. of that. WWE kayfabe the reason. They called the injury a non-displaced fracture near the elbow. Um, I love it. That's what they tweeted out after the show. So uh, Just write a hurty arm. We'll yeah, buy it. He's got a sore bit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's coming back this week. This is according to PW Insider's Mike Johnson. Um, and for me, the timing of this is quite interesting mm-hmm. because you have a certain stipulation match that requires four or five people coming up and uh, the bloodline and the brawling brutes have had their issues as of late, so maybe you could find a couple of dudes to hang out with the brawling brutes and maybe they do a war games match, which would be appropriate because the women's match appears to be being filled primarily from Raw, so you could fill the men's match from SmackDown. Synergy! Be still my beating heart. I have nothing really to add to this story, Andy. Uh, great to see Seamus back on telly, like you say. Uh, I think he's been a revelation in recent... Mm. I was going to say in recent months. Years, Seamus probably. Seamus is always good. He's yeah. just... He's just I think for the moment it really changed for me is the moment he did the Jeff Hardy impression on the top row. <laughs> and I was like, he's a good guy. Um, but Every he, match is now one star more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I love that pitch, Andy. I think it's absolutely yeah. spot on. I think people I think I stole that... it from Hangman Backup. Yeah, that's fine. But backup Hangman. But he's, like, all of his yeah. ideas are good, so, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think I saw uh, the New Day being pitched as the other two as part of the team. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Works for me. Why not? Why not? It'd be nice to get some Survivor Series War Games plans rather than Whatever we got on Raw this week. Um, right, let's give you an update on MJF. Now, of course, a bit of a, a bit of a peek behind the curtain here. I obviously already knew this, but I was sworn to secrecy, so we can only provide it now because Deadline have reported uh, about MJF being cast in this film, and then Mike Johnson at PW Insiders provided the official update, if you want to call it that. But yes, the real reason that MJF has not been on AEW TV recently isn't because the phone kicked his ass, although that probably didn't help, uh, but because he's been cast in that brilliant, well, it looks brilliant, anyway, upcoming film, The Iron Claw. It's the claw, it's coming to get you. That's literally a snippet from the trailer. Uh, No, uh, (laughs) It's the Von Erich story. Uh, obviously, you've seen the images of Zac Efron as Kevin Von Erich, and MJF has been cast as Lance Von Erich, uh, and he's expected to be off TV right up until Full Gear, which, of course, goes down next Saturday. Uh, so don't expect to see him on Dynamite tonight or the go-home Dynamite head. He's on tonight. Gear. Oh, he is he's on, on tonight. tonight. Yeah. Oh, he's been announced. AEW announced him missed last that. night. Yeah. Generally missed that. There you go. So expect him tonight, but not on the, <laughs> the go-home episode. But... Um, yeah, you said this to me this morning, an absolutely spot on piece of cast in this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is really fun. Like, it's really funny to be like the preeminent heel in AEW or whatever he is these days, mm. tweener. Like, the guy who's going to be the main event scene for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, to see that guy, the future franchise player, cast as Lance Von Eric of all people is a really interesting piece of work because Lance was the fake Von Eric. He wasn't, he's not of the bloodline. He was the guy, I believe his surname is Vaughn, actually. They brought him in in, I think, 1985, uh, when Mike was suffering from toxic shock syndrome. Uh, Lance came in as, like, this fake Von Eric, and he wasn't really taken to because people, even in that era of wrestling, saw through it and yeah. all of that stuff. So it's a really interesting part of this tragic wrestling story surrounding the family. So, yeah, I'm really keen to see what he does. Um... I, I, I don't know. There's not been much has come out, right? We've seen the fo- the photos of Zach doing a kick and, 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 and stuff. And they... my, my favorite thing about that is the photo of him with the hair, yeah. obviously, yeah. and all the people who are like 
uh, fans of Zac Efron from like High School Musical days going, what the hell's he done to himself? <laughs> yeah, why is he dressed as Kevin Von Erich, this guy from the 80s? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, nah, like I'm really excited for it for some reason. Um, yeah. I think it's a combination of the shots, like Zac Efron looks incredible in them. Oh. Uh, MGF being in a film, all right, uh, and which is a cool thing. And the story is like, it, it's oh my word! It's it's so sad. I, I I'm reticent to say it's something that like you know belongs in a dramatization. Yeah. Um, because obviously it brought misery and trauma on these people. Um, but like it, it's it, watch the documentary from Dark Side of the Ring, for example. It's like vital pro wrestling history, and uh, yeah, I am really looking forward to it. And the, the Von Erich family deserve just nice things happening to them. For now, from now and all eternity, because the stuff that befell them was horrendous. Yes. Uh, so many just, yeah, uh, revisiting it is going to be uh, something, I'm sure. But the plus side is that if you go and watch stuff like like Mar what Marshall and Ross von Eric are doing these days, and if you see anything from Kevin, he's like living on, on like this paradise yeah. island, like just, you know. Deservedly it, living his it best life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It warms your cockles. Yeah, it warms your cockles. So well, I, I'm fired up. What culture office trip to go and see the Iron Claw together? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Gateshead View Cinema. Put it on. <laughs> What's your? Uh, do you have any any specifics when you go to the cinema? Is it popcorn? Is it a hot dog? Is I, it nachos? I'm a scumbag, man. I buy my popcorn from Tesco across the road. Because if you buy it from Tesco, it's 99p or something. If you buy it in the cinema, it's like eight pounds. Come on. Come on. Do you know a mate of mine genuinely he works on the radio. He once snuck an entire Sunday roast into a cinema. How? He put the gravy in the cup. He took like he took he basically stole well not stole but borrowed some like uh, stuff that like the popcorn comes in and then put it all in there and then came in and just like oh yeah it's just I've just bought some popcorn so it's fine. So let us know. Shout out to Sparky who recently got married. Oh congratulations! Uh, let us know in the comments section what food you elaborately smuggle into the cinema when you're going to watch The Iron Claw. Yeah. Uh, there you go. How outrageous the process. Yeah. I would like to see someone get like a like a like a, an assembly line for like fajitas or something. So yeah, you got the plates. <laughs> Hello, mate. This is me at the cinema. Hello, mate. Can I have a, a hot dog and uh, a, 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 a small coke, please? What's that? I've got to remortgage my house. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Uh, sad update now on our truthing. It's fair to say. I mean, Aye, very... admit we skipped a story. Oh, sorry, but I jumped ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's my story. What's going what on? What am I doing? Sorry. My apologies that's for that. Andy. That's all right. Uh, craziness. You're going to get that at Survivor Series, which is of course War Games. What? what is... film I say? Crazy. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> I work with this every day. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get like so. You expect a degree of craziness from war games, anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Because particularly in WWE, the stipulation here is more about like crazy spots and and, and wild bumps and stuff. Being on your edge, jump uh, off the top. Yeah, that's what the WWE version of these matches is. Um, so you expect it, but perhaps more so this year when the stipulation returns at Survivor Series, because as covered by Brian Alvarez, who tweeted this, reported this to his super followers, uh, WWE needs more uh, footage for uh, uh, highlight reels because all the old footage is from NXT, from War Games, and it's got a bunch of wrestlers that don't work there anymore. So they need a bunch of new footage. So that's- Everyone we... do something bonkers yeah. right now. Uh, so you're gonna see bins on heads, I imagine. You're gonna see uh, people jumping off the top and all of this stuff. They need to fill it up with people who still work there and who weren't cravenly cut during during the during the pandemic era, yep. so so there you go. I mean, we're still technically in the pandemic era, but the empty arena era, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, there you go. That's why it's going to be particularly nutty. I'm not exactly surprised, like you say. Yeah. I think as well to sell the concept of war games for people who, you know, may have not been around when it was a thing years ago, of course, and not seen it because they don't watch NXT. Yeah, it's an easy sell to be like, it's like a cage match, but people actually do bonkers stuff and it's yeah. entertaining. Um, so yeah, so presumably the video footage right now is just going to be, here's Io Shirai jumping off the top of the bin, bin on her head. Bin. Here's another angle of Io Shirai. I mean, it is the best spot in War Games history, so there you go. Come on. <laughs> well, what else could they show? That's a man who's... Ric Ricochet, McAfee. They've got a few. They've got a few yeah, they yeah. Do. 90, it's just going to be very clever editing yeah. of the, the NXTs. No, There's someone jumping onto a pile of people. Ignoring the people are. <laughs> right, they ignore that. But look, it's Ricochet. Michael Hamflit, uh, Michael Hamflit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piss some people off here, I don't care. Oh good. Michael Hamflit asked this morning, uh, why don't they just show like footage from like the classic matches like 1992 <laughs> or 1991 or something? And I went, yeah, that would remind people when the stipulation was good. Anyway. Oh, we're going fishing in the car. I'll tell you what, right? I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll dilute that a little bit because I don't want to be the burial guy. Yeah, he's, just, um, he's just having a bit of fun, guys. Just uh, fishing fishing in the pond. Yeah. Um, the Dakota Kai turn match, it was excellent. Oh, awesome. Yet. 
Kevin Owens return, lots of fun. But like the WWE ones, I I, I appreciate what people like about them, but they are they're spot fests. Yes. And like I watch like a million spot fests every year. I do I don't need more. Plus that it's really weirdly convoluted, isn't it? Especially when WWE goes, I think the babyface should have the advantage yeah. here. You're like, no, that that, yeah. that it's really easy. One on one booking for war games. And that's the thing. Sorry like, for war game. That's the thing. Any style of wrestling done well is great, right? I love a good spot fest. But the WWE ones are often quite contrived, mm. and, and for the reason you've just outlined mainly. Yes, exactly. Uh, right, let's now provide you a bit of an update on our truth as I accidentally pressed the wrong button and opened a different email on my phone. Um, regarding... Our truth emailed you, has he? <laughs> his injury uh, that he suffered recently on NXT in that match against Grayson Bloody Waller. Um, he suffered a torn quadricep, mm. uh, which sounds like it absolutely sucks. He posted a bit of an update video. Uh, this was reported by Mike Johnson, the PW designer, but it was after an update from uh, R-Truth himself. He posted on Twitter. Uh, he said the suntan Superman who'd been hit with his kryptonite uh, and tore his quadricep. And I think he, in the video, he's literally about to go in and get uh, more stuff done Slicey to it. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no word as to when he's going to be back, but he, he's looking forward to getting back. And he appreciates everyone's kind messages. Get well soon, R-Truth. Get well soon. Yeah, I think uh, typically, I think a torn quad is like four to six months, but... Situations are different from human being to human being and all of that. Uh, so yeah, wrestlers are weird. Wrestlers are weird freaks. Um, Cena came back in like three days. Yeah, and then that Royal Rumble, which was awesome, uh, just so funny. Yeah, oh, wait, no, we hate you. I don't like this guy. Yeah, that that I love that crowd reaction. It's so awesome. Logan um, Paul's already back training. I saw. What a psychopath. Jeez, gee whiz. I don't know how these people do it, but yeah, good luck to our truth. Um, very entertaining man. You can put him on TV and just screw around and be funny. Yeah. Like, it's fine. Like, he'll be okay. Yeah. He's got a contract he's for life. he's beloved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's got a contract for life. He'll be in the Hall of Fame someday, man. Like, it's, he's all good. But he shouldn't win the world title just because he's been there for a this, long time. This is correct. Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE? Of course, you want to get in touch with us. Uh, first question today comes from Matt Thorne. He says, hi, guys. With the Money in the Bank situation resolved in the most logical way possible... Mm. Uh, wouldn't it make the most sense to have Sami Zayn win the Royal Rumble? It's arguably the oosiest booking decision there is. You could do that, yeah, absolutely. Um, particularly if your other option, your other option being Cody, is like injured, still not available to come back. Yeah, I think Sami's a good choice because uh, the, the the Roman stuff is the, it's the most over thing in the company, and I don't necessarily think it's going to run out of steam by WrestleMania, no. which is when you would need it to maintain its its moment, momentum. I hate that word uh, until so yeah, this is a good idea. Sammy is fun and creative enough to to make it work. Roman is obviously like larger than life at this stage in WWE. I mean, he has been for ages, but. Good idea. Good idea. You can do the face turn between the Rumble and Mania. There's a lot of interesting possibilities. I like this. It's a good alternative to Cody. Uh, yeah. Still Cody's our first pick though, isn't he? Cody's my first pick. Yeah. I think he's your first pick too. Yeah. But if Sammy's your first pick, I think it's a great choice. Yeah. Whisper it. The Royal Rumble might actually be good next year. Like, yeah. it's it's been an open goal for months now. Yeah. But just Cody and Becky winning and... Yeah, people we like and people with recognisable goddamn themes would make it really good. Final four for the Men's Royal Rumble could be just mint. Like, yeah. just off the top of my dick. Sami Zayn, uh, hey, why, Cody... Why does it always go back to the dick? Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, uh, Seth Rollins Brock? and... why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah why not? <laughs> There you go. Goldberg? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's genuinely, it, it could, anything could happen tonight and yeah. I can't wait for it. Last year was a big disappointment. because like the Yeah, Rumbles, looking back it was crap. At the time I was yeah. like, maybe this is going to be all right. The for past a five or six years have been more great than than than, than bad. Like we've yes, had some oh really, yeah. We've had some real bangers. Last year was just a bit like, oh boy. Especially the entrance themes, fix those. Yes. They're just not as popping as they used to be. You've got a few months. Let's License, get some licenses. Licenses are fun. This guy knows. Get some songs. Speaking of Cody, The Moon Tony uh, writes, if this is Edge's last WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes would be a cool opponent, the rated R superstar versus the American Nightmare. We've been discussing mm. if Cody doesn't challenge Roman, what he could do at Mania. We picked uh, a variety of different situations, but we didn't mention this one. Yeah, that's a good idea for sure. Uh, Cody would fit the kind of Edge, kind of melodrama, epic, yeah. expressive style that Edge likes to do in the ring. Uh, 
Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. I think they would complement each other really well. I think that that match would drive fans of a certain persuasion up the blinking wall because mm -hmm. uh, there'd be a lot of acting going on and stuff like that. But like two of the absolute best guys to fit into that style for me. And yeah, very good, very appropriate, uh, great suggestion. Yeah. Oh, oh, so you're the radar superstar? Uh, right, final question today comes from John Thornsbury who says, with Nikki Cross doing- Thornsbury, a eh? Thornberry. Doing yeah. Movember in case you're wondering why yeah. I've got this on my face. Uh, with Nikki Cross doing her best to bin the 24-7 championship on Raw, should WWE pull a Hacksaw Jim Duggan twist from WCW and have Sami Zayn find the title backstage and claim it for himself? Oh, mate. Um, so, like, I was totally on board with the idea of, of Sami going, look, I've got a belt too, guys. I'm yes. just like you. Uh, and I still am to a degree. Uh, I think it would be tremendously entertaining pre pretending that this hunk of crap is like value, has any value. Um, that being said, uh, even though she missed the bin, um, <laughs> it was quite cathartic, the disregard that Nikki yeah. showed for the belt on Raw. I think I'm kind of ready for it to just go away forever. Melt it down and make literally any other belt, in coins, my opinion. And yes. then spend those coins on... Uh, license entrance themes. There you go! There you Boom. Are. I was going to say pizza, but... Oh, oh, hang on, wait a second. Yeah, that's probably yeah. a better choice. Pizza party, baby. Who's your uh, go-to major pizza joint? I know we, we, there's some nice oh, fancy... Oh, the chains, the chains. Yeah, there's some nice fancy like, yeah, offshoots yeah. here. We've quite a few, actually, So yeah, here in Newcastle. I, I love stuff like this. Um, I Yeah, I like my Neapolitan posh fancy yeah, pizza yeah, yeah. more than anything, don't get me wrong, but major joints. We're talking Pizza Hut, Domino's, and Papa's, the right? Papa. The Papa. So a lot of people in this building, this building, would say Papa John's. Mm, despite um, the fact they got food poisoning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout outs to that person who shall not be named. Uh, and then ordered it again the next day, I understand. <laughs> Place your bets in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Who would do that? Um, legitimately, Domino's. Really? Right, because here's my theory on Domino's pizza, right? I don't go to McDonald's when I want a really good burger. Mm -hmm. I go to McDonald's when I want the taste of McDonald's. Yes. It's a distinct thing. Domino's is that for pizza because it scarcely resembles anything like a <laughs> conventional pizza, but it's still like trash and delicious and yes. bad and awful and great at the same time. The garlic dip, I could drink. Oh. I could one, I could shower myself in that every morning. Yeah. You, what you do is, what you do is you get your pizza, whatever your flavor is, I'm a meaty boy. I like lots of meat on mm -hmm. my thing. What I do is I get the big Frank's Red Hot and I get the big garlic and I dip the actual pizza in the Frank's Red Hot and then I dip the crust in the garlic. I get the chicken kickers. The, again, they taste of pure chemical but they are sensational. That's my order from Domino's. It will cost you about £40 because yeah. you go large and you get the 14 chicken fingers. Despite the deals that they have, yeah. Yeah, and then they come in at the end, you put like £40 worth of pizza to feed one person in your basket. And then at the end, it's like, hey, would you like one pound off garlic bread? <laughs> and you're like, yes, I would. I would like one pound off garlic bread. Congratulations, you just what sold me on that. Uh, what's yours? Um, I don't really care. I just love pizza. But I think if it was down to me, I'd probably go the hot. I got to go pizza. Wow, hot. okay. For the uh, for the dusting on the old okay. uh, on the old crust. I All really right. like that. But I would say yeah, get the dip from Domino's. So if you're yeah. going Domino's, can you get me one of the the big dips? The, the big boys. And I get But I don't really they should mind. Sell that. They should sell that, shouldn't they? Because you have to appreciate the trash and the treasure exactly. for me. So yes, I love that stuff, but I also love complete garbage. Yeah, and I also like it when people say, "Oh, that's disgusting. You shouldn't have that." And you go, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had my taste buds." Yeah. yeah. Listen, if your podcast or video or series or whatever also turns into critique of, of fast food, it's my favourite thing in the world. Yeah. Shout out to the hard lore boys. We, we really fall off regularly on the podcast by talking about food. It's great. We should do this more often, man. It feels freeing. Well, speaking of food... Let's talk about our McDonald's orders tomorrow. Have we still got a question to go? No, no, we just right. got in finally. <laughs> uh, Jer Hale with this amazing revelation because we got sent some recently. I thought it was only available over in the States. But apparently, Jer Hale's pointed out that he got a Charleston chew for a quid in Morrison's. What? In Sheffield. You can get the Charleston Chew in Morrison's in Sheffield. So there you go. Oh my gosh. You want to taste that nougat and it's a, and you can it, it, try it frozen as it says on the packaging. Yeah, we done haven't done that yet. yet I've not done that yet. I'm going to chop it up, freeze it, chop it up and put it on some ice cream. Oh. See how that goes, baby. Look at that. It's a you connoisseur right You smashed up right some uh, Maltesers and put them on your ice cream. What? Oh my God. Right. Get a pack of Maltesers, put it in a plastic bag so it doesn't explode. Do, 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 do. Smash it up with like a rolling pin, sprinkle it on your ice cream. It will change your world. It's incredible. Me and Andy are attempting to diet together at the moment, by the way. <laughs> Food culture coming soon, fam.
<laughs> right, let us know your thoughts hey, on... I lost like 50 pounds this Yeah, year, you've but... done very good. Not 50, I, but a, me, a Not lot. so much. Um, but uh, let us know your food takes, and if you want to talk <laughs> wrestling, I suppose you can do that in the comments <laughs> as well. Like, share, subscribe, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. We're going to be reviewing the show formerly known as Ennis. A little bit later on today, and looking ahead to AW Dynamite, which I probably should do some research on, considering my MJF comment. A I think bit he's earlier. on it. Did that? Maybe I imagined that. Is he addressing his enemies? <laughs> Gangster. Kingston's fighting, though, isn't he? Oh boy, he's fighting. Uh, yeah, he's fighting. Ethan Page. Yeah. He's losing as well, and people yeah. are going to be upset. Yep, understandably. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, at What Culture WWE on Twitter for all your Twitter questions. You can follow Andy Murray at at Andy H Murray. The H stands for Happy Ragnarok Day for those who celebrate. Yes, absolute bald legend. That's why we've blacked out the screen behind us, and not because we can't get it to work this morning. Uh, I'm at Adam Wilborn on Twitter. Sometimes at- your TV just doesn't go on. It's great. Yeah. What? Re- what was the brand? High sense, yeah. more like nonsense. What? Uh, at more what like culture, doesn't work. <laughs> at what culture WWE for all of us. But anyway, thanks, Andy. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.